Their networks span thousands of miles in nearly every major city. Every single one of us uses them. And they hold the key to understand how we behave. From the drugs we take. What's on the menu this evening, sir? Your favourite dish? To how well we are and even how infected we are with COVID. We detected positive samples when there were still no notified clinical cases in the hospitals of the cities. This is the science of our sewage. Europe, known for its cosmopolitan cities, stunning landmarks, breathtaking landscapes, and tricky divorces. We are going and we are glad to be going. Some areas like the Netherlands are well known for their more relaxed approach to drug use. People do get excited at first when they come to Amsterdam and they can sit at the counter of a coffee shop and smoke their joint and have their drink. But what about the rest of us? How do other nations compare? Typically, drug use is regularly monitored through crime and hospital data. But there is another method, and it can detect users that aren't known to the system. It's called wastewater analysis, and it can reveal what we get up to with a frankly staggering level of detail. The European Monitoring Centre for Drugs and Drug Addiction conducted the biggest study of its kind by analysing wastewater, or sewage to you and me, in 70 different European cities. To understand our habits, the results speak for themselves. Take a look at this cocaine map of Europe. The drug is most popular in Iceland, the UK, Belgium and Spain, with little use in Eastern European countries. The study found a cocaine spike in sewage, unsurprisingly on the weekends for two-thirds of cities. This graph shows a sharp increase in usage since 2015. When it comes to MDMA, Amsterdam is at the heart of its usage, with smaller cities such as Antwerp and randomly Eindhoven also big users. Italian police say they made one of the world's largest single seizures of amphetamine discovered in a port in Salerno. Once they reach Europe, amphetamines and methamphetamines show very different usage patterns to cocaine. This map of amphetamine usage shows a shift east and north with Stockholm being its largest user. Methamphetamines, on the other hand, are huge in East Germany, but also Cyprus. It was also the only substance that showed consistent use across the week, suggesting potential problem usage. Legal drugs are also monitored. The Australian government looked at nicotine levels in sewage to see how effective their stop smoking initiatives have been. Scientists can also determine how depressed an area is, thanks to medication being detected. Perhaps even more staggering is the ability to detect disease biomarkers, including those of diabetes, cardiovascular disease, sexually transmitted infections and certain cancers. Then, of course, there's COVID. A memorial has been held for victims in Spain. The country has recorded 812 deaths in the past 24 hours and now has more registered cases than China. By the end of February, we started analyzing the wastewater treatment plant samples from several municipalities in Spain. And we could detect that the virus was already spread in most of, the, of those cities when there were still no notified clinical cases in the hospitals of the cities. And we detected positive samples prior to when the news told us that there were the first cases. Enric and a team of researchers at the Institute of Agrochemistry and Food Technology were studying gastrointestinal viruses when COVID first hit. 
and they became one of the first to switch their attention to this fast emerging pandemic. You can quantify the levels of the viruses, so you can know the trends if it's increasing in that municipality, if it's going down. And so the government can know where to put efforts in order to stop the outbreaks. You can also detect uh, all the asymptomatic people within that area. The ability to detect asymptomatic people gave them the edge in quantifying the extent of the spread in any given area. The science goes even further when it comes to the current and very real threat of mutations. You can directly search for that specific mutations that we already know. So we can look for the South African variant or the UK variant, the Brazilian variants, or we can try uh, applying to the samples, uh, next generation sequencing techniques that allow us to look for any new variant in a sample or uh, any new mutations. Incredibly, Enric and the rest of the team discovered new mutations that hadn't been previously identified. They contacted local hospitals for samples to see if they could find any living cases. When compared to clinical samples, we could identify them and they matched perfectly. So we could describe new variants circulating in Spain and new mutations. We didn't either expect those good results in order that the, the similarity that we found from our analysis respect the clinical cases that were being reported in the same specific areas. So I think it surprised even us of how accurate these analyses were in order to track these epidemics. These striking results suggest that this type of analysis could be used not to just monitor existing disease, but it could also potentially identify new viruses and reduce the threat of future pandemics. So whether it's drug use, diet or disease, every flush has potential to contribute to a greater understanding of how well we are and ultimately what poses a threat to our public health.